What's everyone doing with AI? It feels like every other company has juiced their workflow with generative AI and they're crushing it. You hear about 90% time savings, 50% cost reductions, or even 200% growth. So are you missing out? Generative AI is more than a trendy tool. It's a technological leap up there with cloud computing or smartphones. It's powerful, widely accessible, and frankly, you'd be remiss not to explore how it could fit into your business. But this isn't about writing emails or generating a few lines of code. This is about reimagining entire business processes from supply chain to marketing, not just optimizing what already exists, but uncovering entirely new growth opportunities. Is it all now possible? And if so, how? In economics, this kind of shift in a company is called business model innovation, a fundamental rethinking of how an organization creates and delivers value. Today, generative AI is powering that shift. It's one of those rare general purpose technologies that can reshape entire industries. And one of its biggest advantages? The barrier to entry is incredibly low. With APIs, cloud platforms, and out-of-the-box AI tools, you don't need a massive in-house data science team to get started. Some companies like Duolingo and Shopify have already declared themselves AI first. At Shopify, it means every team is expected to use AI. And before anyone asks for more resources, they have to prove that AI can't do the job. At Duolingo, it means rebuilding systems from the ground up not for humans, but for AI. Every company defines AI first differently. And with headlines like these, it's easy to feel like you're already behind. But don't panic. Let's take a closer look at what's actually happening. This is a maturity or readiness model that's been used for just about every emerging technology over the past decade. Think of it as a motivational poster to help you understand where you stand with the tech now and what your next step looks like. Right now, most enterprises are sitting at level two, experimentation. Maybe a few teams here and there are testing out Gen AI tools, running small pilots, exploring use cases, seeing where it might add value. The final stage, transformation, is where companies like Duolingo and Shopify are headed. This isn't just about using AI. It's about reinventing how you serve customers, build products, and turn ideas into scalable value. Sounds like a buzzword festival, right? Let's flush it out and take it one step at a time. If you've seen our video on generative AI use cases for business, you know there are plenty of things to accomplish with ChatGPT, MidJourney, or GitHub Copilot. But many of those applications simply aid in the same old processes you've followed before. If you started using Gemini instead of Google, it's not really transforming your business, right? There's a gap between casual experimentation with Gen AI and actually optimizing your processes with it. And when you read about another company breaking new ground with AI, chances are they're following a specific framework to get there. It all starts with the real engine behind generative AI, foundation models. As you may know, traditional machine learning usually means building AI models that are trained for one very specific task. Say you want to detect spam emails. You collect a data set of spam and non-spam messages, train a model just to spot spam, and that model can't do much else. If tomorrow you need a model to analyze customer reviews or forecast sales, you have to start over, collect new data, and train a new model from scratch. Foundation models change that game entirely. Instead of training separate models for every single task, 
foundation models are massive, general-purpose models trained on vast and varied data sets. They learn patterns, concepts, and relationships that apply across many different tasks and domains. Because they understand broad context, you can fine-tune or customize them with relatively little additional data to perform specific jobs. Whether it's writing content, answering questions, recognizing images, or even coding. The main advantage of foundation models is that they are powerful accelerators for AI adoption in companies. A business can take a foundation model, adjust it with its own data, and get a custom model for its specific tasks. So you won't just be using ChatGPT, you'll have your own chat interface based on GPT-5, OpenAI's foundation model. Lots of businesses are already successfully implementing foundation models. The logistics giant CMA CGM has created an expert chatbot using Mistral. The US Open used IBM's Granite to provide commentary to matches. Models from Amazon, Google, Microsoft, Nvidia, and more make generative AI available to everyone. So what do you do with them? Foundation models are, well, a foundation for the generative AI adoption in a business. What comes after are the three pillars guiding transformation, knowledge retrieval, AI agents, and operations scaling. First, let's talk about knowledge retrieval. Every company collects a lot of data, but most of it just sits there, buried in dashboards, scattered in folders, or locked away in documentation no one remembers to update. So when someone actually needs an answer, where do they go? With tools like Retrieval Augmented Generation, Generative AI can help surface that buried knowledge. It can pull from PDFs, reports, meeting notes, customer logs, and other internal sources and package the information into something more useful, a response in plain language. Think of it as a competent librarian who's read everything and can point you to the right page. It can be useful in everyday scenarios. A new hire wants to understand the vendor onboarding process. Instead of clicking through a maze of Confluence pages, they ask, what's our process for vendor onboarding? And get a direct answer pulled from the latest doc. A product manager asks, how did users respond to the last update? And sees a quick summary pulled from tickets, surveys, and support emails. Externally, the same logic applies. You can build customer-facing tools that answer basic questions like, return policies, warranty details, or how-to instructions directly from your documentation. It doesn't eliminate your support team, but it takes pressure off them and gives users faster answers. But retrieval is just a first step, because once the AI finds the answer, the next question is, can it do something with it? Let's talk about AI agents. AI agents build on the same language models you're already familiar with, but with more autonomy and flexibility. Most digital tools still operate the same way they have for years. You click, type, request, and the system responds. Contrast that with AI agents that are built to operate with a bit more independence. They can understand context, plan out a sequence of steps call external tools or APIs, and handle multi-step processes, all with minimal human input. Technically, they combine three things. A language model to interpret and reason through instructions, a set of connected tools like calendars or internal systems, and a basic memory that allows for context retention, like, should I book the hotel you liked yesterday? That combination makes them more than just chatbots. Let's say you manage a logistics company. Instead of having someone manually track shipments, update routes, message clients, and file reports, an AI agent could monitor the process in real time, flag issues, reroute based on weather, and send updates automatically. Or imagine a sales team. 
Instead of spending half the day filtering leads and crafting follow-ups, an agent could scan CRM data, prioritize outreach, write draft messages, and schedule calls, freeing up time for actual conversations. AI agents shift automation from isolated tasks to end-to-end -to -end workflows. Instead of just handling small repetitive steps, agents can manage entire processes, coordinating actions across tools, responding dynamically to inputs, and learning from outcomes. When properly set up, agents don't just save time, they fundamentally change how work gets done by handling the full flow from input to output with minimal human intervention. And with that, let's move on to the last major area where generative AI can reshape how businesses create value, operation scaling. Yes, generative AI can help you draft emails faster, generate social posts, even summarize meetings. That's useful, but it's also just the beginning. Real transformation happens when you stop thinking of those tasks as something you do and start seeing it as something you scale. Say you're launching a product in five countries. In the past, you'd need local marketers, translators, and designers. Now, with Gen AI, you can generate product copy in multiple languages, design region-specific visuals, and create demo videos with AI voiceovers all within hours. That's not just faster marketing, it's a more agile, scalable go-to-market strategy. Or take e-commerce. You're selling thousands of products. Instead of writing each product description by hand, AI can generate SEO-friendly copy for every item, tailored by season, location, or inventory. You're not just saving time, you're improving performance. In education, AI can generate lessons, quizzes, and summaries adjusted for different learning levels or styles. In finance, it can take dense data and turn it into clean visual reports that clients actually understand. What about code? Developers are using tools like GitHub Copilot to write boilerplate code, clean up legacy systems, explain errors, and even suggest full functions on the fly. Junior developers work faster. Product teams can prototype without waiting in line for engineering support. So no, you don't have to replace your creative team. This video, for example, was made by people. But you must reimagine what they can do and how far their work can go. At this point, it might sound like generative AI can do everything but make your coffee. But in all honesty, it's only a powerful tool. And like any tool, it comes with trade-offs, limitations, and risks. Let's start with accuracy. Generative models can be incredibly convincing and still get things wrong. Confidently wrong. In some use cases, that's fine. In others, legal, medical, financial, it's a liability. You don't want a chatbot hallucinating policy details or a sales agent quoting made-up prices. You still need systems in place to fact-check, verify, and approve outputs. Then there's privacy and security. If you're feeding customer data, internal documents, or proprietary knowledge into a model, even by way of a trusted API, you need to know exactly where that data is going, how it's stored, and who might have access to it. Not all Gen AI platforms are built with default enterprise-grade controls. You'll need to assess vendor policies, set guardrails, and often build a layer of security around the models you use. There's also the question of bias and fairness. These models are trained on large, messy datasets scraped from all over the internet. That means they can replicate or even amplify the biases baked into that data. So if your AI is helping make hiring decisions, approve loans, or provide recommendations, you need to build in oversight. And finally, there's the very real risk of overuse. Just because Gen AI can generate content or automate a task doesn't mean it always should. When everything is AI generated, quality suffers, authenticity disappears, 
it becomes harder for customers, employees, and stakeholders to tell what's real, what's thoughtful, and what's just filler. We've covered what this shift looks like in practice. Foundation models that can adapt to your business, AI that helps make your knowledge searchable and actionable, agents that handle routine tasks, and content that can scale more efficiently. Start with what you already have. You don't need to build a foundation model from scratch. Begin by connecting your own data to existing models from providers like OpenAI, Anthropic, or Mistral. For example, use Retrieval Augmented Generation to link your PDFs, documentation, or CRM to a chat interface. This approach can make your company's information easier to access and use, often with relatively low effort and meaningful results. Next, choose a pilot use case that delivers clear value. Focus on a specific, manageable problem. Help your support team handle tickets more efficiently assist sales with lead prioritization, or build a simple AI agent to generate internal reports. Demonstrating success in a small area can help build confidence and momentum. Then, embed AI where people are already working. Integrate generative AI tools into familiar platforms like Slack, Notion, Outlook, or Figma. The goal isn't to add complexity, but to reduce friction and bring useful intelligence directly into existing workflows. Encourage experimentation. Provide spaces for teams to test automations, run prompts, or prototype with generative AI. Offer basic training and clear guidelines, then let them explore. Often small experiments can lead to meaningful improvements. Finally, when a use case proves effective, think about expanding it thoughtfully. Could an agent that summarizes client calls also draft follow-up emails? Could your knowledge base serve both employees and customers? Treat each successful experiment as a foundation for broader applications. And a key reminder, keep humans in the loop. Let AI handle the routine work, but ensure people remain involved in reviewing, guiding, and approving outputs. This balance helps maintain quality and control, especially in business. Whether it's writing, coding, answering questions, or making decisions, the most effective AI implementations keep people in control. Like with the internet or cloud computing, the winners of the Gen AI race won't be the ones who adopt the tools the fastest, they'll be the ones who reimagine the business around them. Are you ready to join them? Or maybe you already did. In any case, don't miss our video on the top Gen AI use cases. It's loaded with ideas to help turn your inspiration into action. Remember to subscribe. We'll see you in the next video.